from the kingdom of God is a guarantee report because the Bible declares decrees that we said earlier this morning, this after this morning, we talked about the book of Numbers 19, what among the book of Numbers 23, 19 to 21. And he talked about that your God is not a God that he shall lie. And he said how he's not a son of any man that he should have to repent. The command has been given because God is a commander word that he said his word won't go back. That every command God has ever given, it, is, it, 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 it didn't go short because of, of what God said. It's because of the rebellion of the people. Everything that ever happened to the people in the land because they bought it on themselves. I heard a word of God and a man coming out of the Louisiana said, but you got to believe according to what the scripture says. That you got to look at the word and you got to believe that even when the word of God declares and decrees according to the book of Hebrews 1 and 11. You can't see it, but you got to believe it. If your mind can illuminate and imaginate the things that come to full fruition, then it can be done. The Bible said, if I can just believe, according to Mark 9, 23, that all things are possible. He goes on and he reads again for the for for, for reading again on that uh, Psalm, on the Isaiah, excuse me, 53. And he said, for who has believed the report and who has the arms of the report been revealed? You got to get the report. You got to get the answer. Now, I'm reading from the King James Version as well as the New Amplifier Version. And we're going to be not New Amplifier, but the Amplifier Version. We're going to be going between different translations of New King James International. We're going to be dealing with different areas of the Bible. But I want to get you to bring substance to what we're saying here. That there's a report that God said it's to the arms of the believers that the report that comes from the kingdom is true. In other words, it shuts down the report that's in the land. Sickness, disease. Uh, shortcoming, financial issues, you know, marriage problem, kids going on, kids acting like they got something wrong with them, you know, the people on your job trying to get you fired. The word says, according to the, what the hymn knowledge is giving you, you go to the doctor, God says, okay, now you got his report. Now I got another kind of antidote for you. I ain't not an antidote for you, but I got another kind of prescription for you. And I got a prescription that's coming from the kingdom of God to tell me, if you're going to believe their report, you're going to believe my report. Now the Bible declares, according to the word of God, he said, by his stripes you are healed. That even in the midst of your transgressions, even in the midst of your circumstances, even if you've been rejected and going through all the things in your mind, the Bible said by the word of God that the stripes that he took on the cross or he took going to the cross, it's already been done. Now, we're going to get down to Isaiah 5, uh, 53 and 5, but we want to move on here and we want to look at this real close over here in the area of uh, Isaiah 53 and 2. It says, for he shall grow up before for him as a tender plant. And it says, in the root out of the dry ground, he has no form, no comeliness, or no, 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 no really attractiveness, according to the physical report of a man, because man's got something wrong with everything that he look at. But God began to declare the decree that he takes something so foolish that in the eyesight of man, that one reason that we, we get mixed up, we keep looking at the parallel rather than looking at the vertical. Now, if you keep on looking at what's around you, it takes you back and it knocks down really what it says over in the book of Hebrews 1 and 11. If you, if you, know, you, you got to see, in other words, with the faith is something that you can't see. You got to believe it. It goes in the area of health as well, in the area of prosperity, in the place of joy. You know, the Bible declares that, that, that faith coming by. That's what it says in Romans 10, uh, over there in 10 and 17. He said, faith coming by. He declared, according to the book of Galatians, that he said, you got to know how to walk in the spirit. Now, you understand what it says in Galatians over there in 5 and 16. He gives you the very answer to say, look, if you walk in the spirit, do not fulfill the lust and the desires of the flesh. Now, he gives you a whole list of some of the things that come at you from 19 to 21 that try to alienate you. But when you get on down past 21, down to the 22nd chapter, 21 and 22, over in the book of Galatians 5 and 16, he talks about the love. That's the first thing that you got to have in your heart. That you got to peel back the calluses. And all the very negative things and egregious thoughts that you have in your mind toward anybody. If you want to report to God to go to the kingdom, it will register there. And even as he declared the word to Samuel, that now one of your prayers has never, ever touched the ground. God got the same plan for you. And even when you begin to pray and declare and decree the word of God, then there's no weapon in, in there anywhere. There's no weapon formed against you to prosper. God begins to decree and he begins to declare when you look out over here again in Isaiah 53 and 2. He said, for see, he would grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He has no form, no comeliness. And when he shall be seen, when you shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire. Let, let me let me tap on that a little bit. And I want to read some translations here. And maybe you could come up with something a little better. Maybe you're smarter than I am. I don't know. But I just move in the spirit. But the word of God says over here that, that when we read over here from the New International Version, he says, you grow up before you 
before him as a tender plant and he said as a root out of the dry ground and he should have no form of comeliness and he said that when you should see him there is no beauty that we should desire of him now let me let me speak about something how the children of Israel continued to go against the word of God in such a way that they were just kind of mixed up, kind of like we are right now, you know. We, we, sometimes we get in that James thing, that one and eight. We like, we like Dr. Jekyll. We like Mr. Hyde. We're kind of wishy-washy. We're up and down. We're back and forth. Sometimes we toe up from the floor up in our mental thinking, and we don't understand that we need to check up from the floor up through the Holy Spirit, that we got to understand that we got to filter everything through the power of God. The word goes in saying that, that to the eyes of Israel, in the eternity of the earth that the matters was no dry ground this is what he's saying that the matter was no dry ground but the eyes resisted what delight upon one tender plant which had a living root the living root the living root am i in anywhere as was jesus christ the Hebrew verb and the verses throughout uh, verse 7, you look at the book of Hebrews and you look at the 7th chapter or you just go to the 7th verse of this and I just want to kind of run you over there for a minute. I don't want to pull you away from what we are right now. But if we go over to verse 7, we look at Isaiah, uh, over in the book of Isaiah uh, 53. Let's look at the 7th verse for a minute because I'm looking at my notes and I want to make sure I get what's to you and what God has given me that, that comes from the kingdom of God. Now he says this, that, that, we were, that, that, that he was oppressed he was afflicted in my somewhere and he opened not his mouth and he bought and, and he opened out his mouth and he was bought as a lamb to be slaughtered and a sheep before his shears and dumb so open and so dumb that so he opened not his mouth now now this isn't said anything negative he just humbled himself in the midst that he knew what he come here to do and, and, and when we think about that, that when he was come before the sheep before the slaughter, even when the sh even though you, the clapping of the shears of things that was ready when they, when the, when the sheep get ready to go be grazed and when they get ready to go have the, the wool cut from them, that the shears carry such a sound that it didn't even bother them. They they just it was just a plain thing. Whether you cut the throat, I mean, I don't want to sound negative than anybody. And when they went to slaughter, they, it didn't even matter to them. They were just put there. See, the Bible said you got to become a sacrifice for Christ. But Jesus came in as a sacrifice to die for the remission of every one of our sins. In other words, he was the new Adam. See, Adam, I, some people tell me that when I talk about how Adam didn't take control of the garden, and they said, no, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. Well, you got your own translation about what you think. But I believe when God gave a command to, the, to Adam in the garden that he said that everything in this garden that you should not do, but in that tree right there in the middle of the garden, he said, this one you should not do, the tree the good and evil. But when he gave him the very the rib that he bought him from, the very woman that he designed for him, because he didn't want him to be lonely. And if you really understand the scripture, he named the animal before he named the woman. In other words, he told Adam that he was lonely, but he bought a woman before he bought the woman. He bought an animal. He, he named the animal before he bought a woman in it and into his life. God wanted to really understand that if Adam knew what it was, well, he was dealing with an animal, he dealt with a woman. And sometimes people feel like, you know, when you're in the marriage, it's like you, 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 you want to, I don't know, maybe I'm saying it wrong, maybe Pastor Ellis got to watch his mouth, but I want to sometimes, you treat your wife like she's a weird beast, you treat your husband like he's some kind of weird beast, you treat your kids like they're some kind of grazing hogs out there, you want to beat them them all day long, you want to talk bad to them all day long, and you really need to sit down and understand that's a generation that's designed to help you the way you're going, that's a seed that comes from you. That as Jesus Christ began to come into the earth and reveal those things to the people that let them understand the Messiah has arrived. And I'm not coming riding on any kind of palace or any kind of pony. I'm not coming with a crown on my head. I'm coming like an ordinary man, but I got the power to represent the kingdom of God that's within me. I don't need no throne. I don't need nobody to put me on an upper echelon. I don't need no click. I don't need no title. I don't need anything. But according to the word of God, when you look over the book of John 14, Jesus declared in the creed, I come to do the work of the one who sent me. In other words, did you believe it not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me? Or believe me not for the works that I do? When you understand how Israel was so, so hard-headed in their thinking, that even when you think about Apostle Paul, when he began to tell them about the very things that they was dealing with, that wasn't pleasing to God. When you look over to the word over there in the book of Romans 10, he talks about that the Lord heart desire that they might be saved. Now, this is just a rebellious people. Now, I'm not getting away from what I'm speaking about in Isaiah 53 because I'm trying to get you to see something here. People will look at you as if you're deficient. They'll look at you as if you ain't got what it takes to get an overflow for the kingdom of God. Don't, don't, don't tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about because I, I, I see it every day. 
that even when you don't have to display the scenes or be have the fashion, the form of things in front of you that make you seem that you're an apostle, you're a preacher. You're not hanging around valid men that make you look as if you got something going on. But say they'll look at you because you look at you like you decrepit. As if you ain't got what it takes to get an overflow from the kingdom of God. Because you ain't got a bunch of bricks and mortar. You ain't hanging around men of God who wear robes and rings and, and crosses in their right pocket. They got different colored shirts that represent them to make them better than everybody else. No, you don't want to hear this preaching. Because I'm just telling you what the truth is. And the Bible said the truth should set you free. I don't believe in any man who sits on the throne to carry those kind of titles. If they're really a man of God, they're not going to look at the, the, the very things that they have in terms of making themselves being something that they're not. You know, if you look on these Facebooks, you look on these index and all these other things that are going on, people can make themselves really what they want to make them. They can be the CEO, CDO, FN on every kind of other alphabet behind their name. But God is not looking at those things. He's looking at you as being a man who's called to do the work that he called you to do. In other words, the Bible says you are called according to the fees of 2 and 10 to be a workman. It's not your title. God didn't come for you here to be a parade. He called for you to get the people because says that the harvest is truly great, but the labors are free. Jesus came on the earth not as a person who looked that he was parading to be something more than what he thought he would be. The Bible said he looked as a man that was really despised and even looked that he had the kind of ability to be what God called him to be. But Jesus began to understand and realize that he knew what his purpose was. When you take your Bible, you go over to the book of uh, John for a few minutes. We want to just kind of roll in the book of John if you roll with me for those who have the time, for those who don't, then so be it. But the word of God declares according to the book of John 14. He said, believe it or not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. He said, the words that I speak, I speak not of myself. But the Father who, the, but the Father, but the, I speak not of myself, excuse me. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he does the work. And even though I begin to speak on his mic, my words get crossed or scrambled. But I'm not a person of any kind of oratorical skills or any kind of oratorical profession. Because I'm not trying to be something that I'm not supposed to be. I'm trying to be what God called me to be. And I move through the power of the Spirit. I move through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, man and woman, God, when you move in the Spirit, it ain't got nothing to do with the crowd around you. Whether you got a person out there, you just one person in the middle of a crowd like John the Baptist out there just preaching the word in the wilderness. You may not look appealing to all the people. Because he told the Pharisees, well, what did you come here to see? You could, but, but what did you? But, but what, but for what would you come here to see? A man in king's garment? I, am I in anywhere? John didn't look like he was anything. The brother was out there had a had a mohair sweat on. As I heard the man of God over there in Louisiana say, and he had a tied up, he had a belt tied around his waist, and he didn't look like he was pulling to do anything. But you know what? John knew what he come here to do. John come to set the road straight for the one who was coming to set the area straight in terms of the remission of our sins. He said, repent, 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 because the kingdom of God is at hand. John didn't look like he was anybody. He didn't look like he had king's garment on. He didn't look like he had royal palace clothes on. He didn't look like he had fine apparel. He was a man come to do the work that God called him to do. That when you're in your season and what you're in, am I speaking to anybody on this afternoon? That it doesn't matter what you look like. You got to understand what the book says over in Jeremiah, over there in Jeremiah 7. That he's talked to Judah. He said, when you come in this house, you need to know how to mend your ways. You need to know why you're coming up off in here. It's not about your accolades. It's not about what you got on. Ain't nothing wrong with you looking good. But you got to understand that even when he talked about the Pharisees, he said, y'all look good. Y'all got these wide chaglapa trees. Y'all got the best seats in the house. But he said, but you know what? Y'all like whitewashed tombs on the outside, but you're full of dead man bones. You got to believe and understand when God called you to do your work. He didn't call you to the place to do something to make it look good in the name of Jesus. Hold on here. Got some mess in here for you. Let me go through my scriptures here and look at some things here. I want to check some things. Let's stay right here in John 14 for a second. We'll go to Isaiah 53. Let's stay here for a second. He, he talks about over here, and he looks at Isaiah 14, and he looks at the 10th verse. He said, believe it that I am. He said, believe it that I am in the Father. Now, notice what I'm saying. That The first word of what you get to understand before you even think about the Father, you got to believe in the Father. Am I somewhere? You know, because cause see, when the word comes to it, they say faith coming by. Am I somewhere? The Bible declares according to Romans 2 and 7 that you got to know how to walk in the Spirit. That's a transformation as being a man and woman of God that you got to how to walk in the Spirit. That everything is possible to him that believe. And God began to orchestrate and send forth his angels and do the work that he declared to you according to your belief. Now look what he says over here in John 14, 11. He said, believe me that I am, that I am in the Father. 
Now I'm in the Father. You got to be in the Father's will. That's why the model prayer comes, Our Father who art in heaven, how that be thy name. So that's a will and a purpose that got to be done. But before you move forward, you got to know who's put in place to get you to where you need to be. You got.